Hey, it's Sid with Table Talk with Sid Features. I'm back with Donnie Angel, the practical mystic, Reverend Jody. And our discussion today is on perception and how perception works. I think it also has a lot to do with closure for some. And we want to discuss this because of where a lot of people are within the country right now, how uh, people are handling stress, how they're handling conflict, how they're handling uh, situations of feeling like they're in a position where they have no control, no say, where they feel like uh, maybe people have taken advantage of them, their opinions, and their, their way of life like their core way of life. So I think that uh, this discussion is something that can help a lot of people. I know um, I just did this within a, a, a workshop, a seminar, on perception or closure, however you want to look at that, and that a lot of what's so beautiful is that the gift of gratitude, for example, is a vehicle given to every one of us that is given to us as a vehicle to help protect yourself, to help yourself to overcome, to help yourself to find your strength, your meaning, so you can move on. It also is that vehicle that if you can take a moment and step back from whatever situation you're in that feels unfair, hurtful, angry, and find the gift. Instead of looking at what was taken from you, what you were left without, find where you have your strength, where you have your abilities, what gift was left with you, what opportunities made you stronger. Simply, it could be brought upon uh, anger, frustration, um, but where those gifts are, because when you can find where you can put yourself in the driver's seat in your life, you feel a little more peace. You have a little more ability to move forward. So I believe, I can't remember, I like to switch off. I'll start with you, Donnie. I can't remember who I started with last time. So let's let's address this, this perception. And it doesn't have to be necessarily directed to where the country is, but it is about conflict and overcoming. Well, I think we almost have to speak to where it is because it seems to be pervasive. I, in my lifetime, I don't know that I've ever seen a bigger reaction from this many millions of people at the same time. So it, what I'm noticing, especially in social media, which I'm very active in and spend a lot of time there, is that there's this idea, everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people seem to have this idea that their way of looking at things is the correct way, and that everyone else around them is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like there's this sort of every person thinks they're the only sane person in the, on the planet type of a thing. I actually even appreciate people who say, I can see that I'm crazy. I can see that <laughs> I'm not seeing this clearly. Mm-hmm. When we believe that we're seeing something completely clearly and in truth and in reality, what we're doing is not understanding that every one of us has cognitive bias and many cognitive biases. Uh, I mean, a lot of people don't even know what that means, but these are the filters through which you see the world. So here we are engaged, we think we're engaged in reality and what we're actually engaged in is a buffered version of reality coming through our own filters. Well, because we have different filters, that's what makes it so divisive. That's what makes it seem like how in the world can that person believe what they're saying? Yeah, it, they're, they're an idiot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and that's a lot with communication, whether, whether within a relationship, whether within your place of business, because I, I agree 100%. So many people want to stand so firm that the way I see it is the only way for it to be seen. And when a person is able to step back and go, okay, I have my point of view, but I'm still willing to learn. I'm willing to be educated. Doesn't mean I'm going to agree with you, but it means I'm willing to still listen. And that just because I see something one way doesn't mean everybody has to see it that way. Well, yes. I mean, people believe what they believe for good reasons, at least reasons that are good to them, valid reasons to them. And so if you look at somebody that you instantly make a judgment about, oh, they're sexist, they're racist, they're stupid, they're lazy, you don't know the whole story. 
You don't know why they are the way they are. And you have to understand that it's not you, fully you, interacting with fully them. It's your cognitive bias interacting with their cognitive bias. Your filter is interacting with their filter. So it's, I, I don't even know, you know, there's an old saying, no two people have ever met each other. Mm -hmm. And there's something very real about that because we are all coming from such different perceptions and different filters. How do we even know? To me, the first step in what I've really, really been working on, which is counterintuitive to all my conditioning, but um, the first step is to just acknowledge that I don't know. Acknowledge that I'm coming from my, through my own filters. Acknowledge that my opinions m may not be even the most useful opinions or the most educated or anything. Right. That's the, to me been the first step to even being able to listen to what other people are trying to communicate. Right. You know, I have to right. say there's, uh, there's something beautiful in what you just said. Buddha says that the strongest answer is I don't know. And we don't know. Right. We don't. <laughs> I mean, in reality, we don't. We're dealing with a tiny sliver of information in an infinite universe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I say this to my clients all the time. If we really knew, if we as an individual really knew, wouldn't we all be living that perfect, quote unquote, life, that perfect existence, that perfect knowledge, if we all really knew. But what's to say it's not perfect, though? Uh, the imperfection is what's perfect uh, about uh, it. Well, exactly. Because, you know, this is, this is something I was talking with Donnie about earlier, is that I have some big judgments in certain areas, but I know I have the judgments Mm -hmm. And I know why you I have the you, judgments. You're aware that you have them, is what you're so, saying. So you are aware of your cognitive biases, I and that's the only way to see past them. Am. But it, but it, it's also allowed me to get past them and to accept new ideas and new... Well, I'm going to give the exact example I was talking about. My experience of dating men outside of the United States has not been good. <laughs> I, I'll be quite honest, I will not date foreign men because I've never had a good experience. Um, and I won't, I won't communicate with them either. And let's just address why, at least this is from me looking from the outside. Uh -huh. It is perception. It is cultural. Mm -hmm. There's a cultural way he lives wherever he's from, the way he sees women, the way he sees life compared to you right. as an American woman. And right? But even that, there's right, there's perception. That's because correct. We have been conditioned and we've had a couple of experiences that have led us to think that tens of millions of people are all having the same experience as those five men that we interacted with. Right. Correct. Well yes. and and you know that's that's been my way of thinking is I won't date foreign men um, and I won't interact with them. Um, however, I happen to have an interaction with a man from India recently. And I, I'll i admit, I, I kind of lashed out at him at first and I said, I don't want anything to do with you because I don't appreciate the way you guys treat women. <laughs> yeah, I love it when you say you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like a whole, I know. a whole country. I know. I mean, I'm admitting. I'm admitting. <laughs> but um, we have actually had some incredible conversations um, because I, I gave him a little sliver. A foot in the door. I gave him a foot in the door because we had a common ground. Mm. And this guy's brilliant. And we've had some wonderful conversations. And... He's a ta tantric practitioner as well. And so we've really had some wonderful conversations about sexual healing. And so I, I let down my guard a little bit. And, and now there's something. And now yeah. there's something. And we've had, I mean, this man's married. It's not like there's right. uh, any kind of romantic thing. <laughs> yeah, but it's thing. shifting but your perception. A, it is shifting. And, you know, I'm, I'm at least aware mm -hmm. of my bias and you know? and I'm opening the doors yes, to sure. things. You know and where I learned perception uh -huh. is um, right out of high school I went and spent a year uh, dancing and touring in Japan 
And I remember before going there, my dad said to me, Americans believe that we only love our children as deeply as we love our children, that we, we live the correct style of life, and that the beliefs that we have within our country are the only truth. Mm -hmm. And I remember him saying that, and, and he didn't say any more. He just said, when you go, have your eyes, ears, and your heart open so you can see what's really going on. And I didn't understand that at first. And when I got there, I remember there was a big earthquake someplace. And there was a community. No, maybe it's, what is that? When the water, tsunami, tsunamis. Yes. And to watch those families and the, the pain they felt when they lost a loved one. And I remember watching a mother mourn for the loss of her baby. And it hit me like, oh my gosh, they love their children as much as we love our children. And it was perception. And that they value their community as much as we value our community. And there was a lot of things within their community I looked at and thought, oh, I think this, this may be even a bit more balanced in a way of living than even what we have in the United States. But that really was an eye-opener to perception. When you see that, you know, th this is, these are the things that end wars. When you see that value of human life, what we've done from the time we're small children, we are actually put into different groups. We have different labels. And even this group we have called, you know, we're Americans. We live in the United States of America. Even that can be divisive in a way. It doesn't mean that we can't be proud of our country and grateful for this system. At the same time, it, when you really see yourself as separate from the rest of the human race, you start to get bias is just around that. There's an elitism that comes. There is a feeling of entitlement. Mm -hmm. And and what it does is it starts to break the world up into a bunch Absolutely. of different pieces. At the end of the day, we're so much more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, have you heard that? They had this on um, one of the talk shows and they were talking about what fences, they were just speaking about fences, not walls, but fences. So Take it as you will. But what a fence around your property does. And they were talking about people that were within that home with their fence and their gates and all of that. The people within their home are believing they are keeping people out. When in reality, when you build a fence, you are keeping yourself from the community. You are holding up behind these walls and you are not understanding the community because you're so busy pushing people away. So with that, Jody, I want to hear your, your feedback on how people can begin to mend, overcome. I, I, I don't believe, I don't want anyone to get this false idea that you just overcome and mend overnight. That's not typically how life works. It takes a little bit of work, a little adjustment. What do you mm -hmm. think people can do to help them ease their frustration and anger? Communicate. Communication. Um, you, you mentioned it earlier. And, and this is just a, I don't, I don't even want to call it a tired saying because it's applicable all the time. But we have one mouth and two ears. We need to listen to yes. other people. We need to shut our damn mouths. <laughs> yes, and really hear them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, and I love that you said that because... There's a difference between listening and hearing. Yeah, listen to understand, not listening yes. to judge, not listening to you know have a rebuttal, mm -hmm. but listening to understand. Well, and don't, you know, oftentimes we're listening to someone and we immediately are ready with our response to it. No, you have to just listen. Yeah, process. Don't be ready to respond. Just yeah. listen. In my old age, I've gotten a lot better at that. That was one of the things I know as I've gotten older, I really wanted to work on is the opportunity to process. So when mm -hmm. someone gives me something, something I'm a little unsure of, something I don't know that I agree with, or something I just simply don't understand, never heard, I will say, all right, I've heard you. I just need some time to process because I do want to show regard and respect to someone else's feelings, their beliefs, where they stand, why they stand there. And 
And not that I would agree with them, but I do want to do my best to understand mm -hmm. their point of view. So it is marinating. You know, I say that to my girls. You need to go marinate on that. It may take a day. It may take a week. Ponder it, because pondering is deeper than thinking. Yes. Pondering is thinking and feeling more than just now. But what does it mean from my past to my future? All of those deep-seated things. Well, and trying to step into somebody else's world and experience... Um, one of the really practical applications of what we're talking about can be in whether it's social media or your interactions you have, the, what I call the casual interactions you have with people. So you're seeing a slice of their life. Um, this came up for me really strong. Yesterday, one of my Facebook friends posted um, a picture of a grocery cart and how dare whoever this lazy person is not have taken care of the grocery cart. Now, I'm not judging her for posting that because how many times have we all thought that? You know, you're at a oh, grocery yeah. store and you're like, really? You couldn't even take care of your cart, right? I, I spent years thinking that way. I really spent years thinking that most of the planet was lazy except for me. And <laughs> so I had an experience with this once when my, my third child was a newborn and I had taken him grocery shopping for the first time and I also had my two other small children. And when I got back and unloaded the car, he was in his car seat as I was unloading the groceries. And he was screaming and he started throwing up. And so I had to deal with that. And my cart was left there. And a lady walking by gave me the dirtiest look. Like, how dare you? And I just remember feeling this desperation. Like, she has no idea <laughs> what I'm going through. I haven't slept in weeks. I have this child throwing up in my back seat. I have, you know, a four and a six year old back here with me too. Mm -hmm. And I think of all of the times that I've had an experience where the person upset with me didn't understand, didn't understand the whole story. Right. One, one that I deal with on a fairly regular basis is, um, with driving. So I will not get very close to the vehicle in front of me. And so I will have people behind me honking, upset that I've left some space between me and the vehicle in front of me. Well, my best friend was killed in a car accident when we were 20 years old. And she, the accident had to do with her being too close to the truck in front of her. And so there are reasons why I won't get, see, you have someone honking at you angry, but there's a reason. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, sure. and I, so then I'm like, okay, I really appreciate when people give me the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how can I give other people the benefit of that? How can I acknowledge that in this casual interaction I'm having with somebody, that I'm seeing a tiny fraction of their life? And, you know, that's oh, just, that, that's so powerful in just saying that because um, I think we have to allow for some understanding of other people or misunderstanding, if you will, so that other people will allow that of us. And really what com that comes down to, and we've talked about this before, is common respect and courtesy mm -hmm. for others. Because when you can find just that respect and courtesy for others, understanding and patience, the world in general will just be a much better place. Not as many wars will happen. Because you're taking time to understand. I remember the other day on the road and there's you know, this car going very slow and everyone's honking, honking, honking. And I remember pulling up and that's, it was a little old lady. Yes. It's somebody's mother. Somebody's it's somebody's grandma. grandmother. Right. It's a woman that's probably scared to death to be on the road in the first place. She has no other choice but to be there to help herself. And people are like, no, no regard. No. And I, I, that's a huge downfall for, for society. In, in a whole, is the lack of respect, regard, and common courtesy for one another. Well, and, and yes, exactly, and it comes back to the, the original topic of perception. We, when we have a perception that, in general, people are fill in the blank, whether this is about a certain race or a gender or whatever, when we have these perceptions, we will see through that confirmation bias that experience happening over and over again. Mm-hmm. I saw so many people posting on social media about how many people are playing the victim that my status this morning is maybe you having to deal with the people in your life playing the, the victim is your victim story. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
You know, if mm-hmm. you're you're just looking, oh, look at these victims. Okay, so then what's your victim story? Because I guarantee we mm-hmm. all have one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or seven. Team. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> Um, that was excellent. Yes, but but that's a, this. So this going back to this perception idea. What if? And this is this is a radical idea here. A radical per, way to perceive. But what if we assume again that we don't know? We give people the benefit of the doubt that they're doing the best they can. What if that becomes our new cognitive bias? Mm-hmm. If we, we're we're going to have them. So what if we have it being like, well, the, the filter I'm going to see this world through is that people are doing the best they can. Mm-hmm. The filter with I, what they have with and what, what they, they know, that's correct. And we cannot judge that because, oh my word, have we not been given a different set of circumstances? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, even people say, "Well, oh, I had it rough." Okay, first of all, you don't know something as simple as what that other person's IQ is. Yes. What their educational opportunities were. Yeah. They they may not even have had parents. Since you know they that were... kind of thing when people try to compete against. Oh, oh look at how hard my life has been. <laughs> look at the downfalls I've had. I have to just like take that <laughs> key and lock my lips up because it is a real thing that just jabs me in the side. Because you don't, you know, really don't, and it is not a competition on who has struggled more or well, less. Well, and everybody's struggles are, are different. They're they're different. We all have them, right. um, but the the richest person can have struggles too. Absolutely, they're just different than yours. Well, and we all have a different form of resilience. Mm-hmm. So we might look at some. Oh, I'm much more resilient than you, and they could be so much more resilient than us mm-hmm. in other ways. Correct. Right. So this is why, as soon as you get into comparison and it's this contest, it all falls apart. But what if you looked at things through not only I don't know. But and they're doing the best they can. I'm open to hear. I'm, o- I'm open to listen. Mm-hmm. And how about this one? We, I want to see where we are the same. Yes, where we uh, can come I together. I want to see where in that Venn diagram can this person and I come into the same space. Because I guarantee, even if you're dealing with someone like very extreme, like a KKK member, right? Mm-hmm. There's going to be a crossover in that Venn yeah. diagram. Okay. Somewhere. And it doesn't mean that I'm not I'm not saying you have to love everybody or respect everybody's beliefs, but what if there is something you don't know? Some so, commonality. Some commonality. So a lot of times I'll just say, there's something here I don't know. So I want to bring this up because I don't like to speak of him very often. <laughs> oh, shoot. But nevertheless. <laughs> I just let the cat out of the bag. Nevertheless, uh, I I sat with myself for a long time uh, after the inauguration Mm -hmm. because I said to myself, I am going to find something, something that I have regard for, something that I have respect for. Yes. And this is what I came up with, and I think it's quite fabulous, (laughs) actually. So here is a man. That it is a perfect example of when you believe in yourself yes. without a doubt yes. to your core yes. about every belief you have, every reason why you do what you do, your talents, your abilities, your worth, where it can take you. Here is a man that was fired from his own television show. And, you know, a lot of people would fall down the the, the hill and go, oh, shoot, I just lost out on my television show. N- not this man. This man goes, fine, I'll just run for the president of the United States. And I thought, wow, okay, okay, I can find some acceptance in that because that, whether I agree with him or I don't agree with him, whether I like him or I don't like him, that resilience to see your abilities and to see that the things, and if you listen to him, I, I do believe down deep inside, he doesn't see as his errors, as errors ever. He sees, he truly believes that he's making good choices, that he's moving forward, that he's progressive, whether I believe it or not, or agree. Yay for the living, breathing, well, breathing Cheeto. <laughs> so here's what I have to say to that. This is, this is my prayer. God, grant me the confidence of a middle-aged white man. Amen. Um, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I totally see what you're saying. I, I thought the same thing. That, that if, if, if there's nothing else, that man knows how to pick himself up mm, and yeah. brush himself off. And move on and to move higher on. and bigger, better things. So, right. there, there's, and, and when we really are able to take a few breaths, get past our knee-jerk reaction, bring some neutrality to the situation, we can see those things. And, and if nothing else, it can maybe ease our anger and our rage. And it doesn't mean that we cannot stand up for what we Correct. believe. It doesn't mean that we can't take action um, and to speak up when we see something that on the core level feels unethical. At the same time, that just that basic understanding can start to build those bridges. And right now... We need some bridges, you guys. Oh, big time. Like, we really, and the, this idea that we're talking about today of being able to see outside of our own perception, I don't know a better place to start. Mm -hmm. It's yes. been the only thing that has worked for me. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is probably a good thing that's happened with um, creating this division is that maybe we'll start to have some real conversations. The division mm -hmm. was already there, right? So now yeah. it's all on the surface. Yeah. The wound has been there for a long time. It's very, very on the surface right now, and it's painful for a lot of people. And so good. Let's have some conversations. And it has brought unity because it has pushed certain people to stand up mm -hmm. a little more firm with what they believe and what, what they want to be known for and with their voice. And I think that's powerful. I... I in, for myself, again, take me with a grain of salt, but I conflict, you don't want conflict and chaos all the time in your life. Mm. However, conflict can be so beautiful because what conflict pushes is discussion. Mm -hmm. It pushes people to think outside the box. It pushes people to problem solve. Clarify. Mm -hmm. Conflict is not a downfall. Conflict is only a downfall when we allow it to become a war you're, you're taking lives and things like that. But conflict in general, again, we don't need it every day. We don't want chaos every day. That's just out of control. But conflict can be one of the most brilliant gifts given to a home, to a country, to a place of work because it pushes change. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you guys want to say before we're done? You know, just that I, I'd love to give a shout out to everybody. I know that there's a lot going on and I know that there's a lot of pain out there and a lot of confusion and a lot of upset. And none of that is invalid. You have every right to feel what you feel. Mm -hmm. And all we're asking is that maybe you just create a little bit of space around it to see another possibility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just want to reiterate what I said earlier. It's time to close your mouth and open your ears. Yes. Okay, in your day, you will fall down. Stand up, brush off, and move on. Talk to you.